Hey y'all. Howdy. So we are joining in on a collaboration that was, uh, the idea was started by Courtney over at Highway Homestead and it's talking about starting a homestead from scratch because most of us have started from scratch. Yes. Um, a few of you out there may have already had land or inherited land or something like that, but even in that situation where you've had um, parents or grandparents who farmed, most people are probably kind of getting into the actual homesteading where you're growing your own food for your own family um, on a smaller scale, even if you do more on a bigger scale, but the, the homestead itself, uh, you have to kind of learn as you go and do it from scratch. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of want to talk about um, how we started homesteading, what we did, what we got first, and all of those kind of things. So um, I guess you probably started or got the ball rolling with, with uh, the first garden we yeah. had, right? We actually lived in Florida at the time, and I started seeds in the house. Never garden, never grew anything in my life at that point. I didn't know anything about it, but I just started tomatoes and um, some peppers and... I didn't even think I liked peppers because I didn't eat peppers much, but I started them and I was going to eat them and now I love peppers, but that's uh, funny. And we started the garden there and it was doing really well and we um, we actually didn't really end up harvesting because we moved. Right. We gave the plants to a friend and they had um, they had abundant harvest from the plants. So yes, we started, we ended up with squash and cucumbers and all kinds of green beans in the backyard, there was a bunch, um, bunch yeah. of stuff and they but came. even though we didn't get anything from that garden, we got back to Virginia in time to start a whole nother garden. Yep. This was so. in uh, 2012 yeah. was the year. And we did, we, we moved back um, right at the beginning of May, maybe in the end of April, but it was right there at the time to start a garden. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Derek tilled the garden. We scrambled. We scrambled, but we got it done. We were uh, on my parents' land, which connected to my cousin's land and lots and lots of composted horse manure at her barn because you know horses have been there for 50 something years yeah. <laughs> a long long time so um, Derek was able to use their tractor or till um, and bring load after load after load of compost and manure and that garden was prolific it wasn't a huge garden spot but it was it was amazing so mm -hmm. um, our priority and then we got chickens our priority was getting starting with growing our own food what we could do where we were so yeah. we started with the garden that was the number one that's probably the easiest thing for most people because even if you're in a neighborhood you can put garden beds in or container garden in your backyard and grow something yes um and then the second thing was chickens it started with six chicks and then quickly turned into three flocks jenna calls chickens the gateway animal they are the gateway animal <laughs> so we end up with our chickens are laying hens and um then i think after that we added uh, meat birds probably which Chickens, I learned at the garden, birds, we grew yep. stuff. We learned how to preserve and can. Well, you you had can when you were a kid, but yeah. it's a long time. We ago. didn't can right when I was. We we did green beans and water, water bath. That's scary. Botulism, yeah. anyone? It's a wonder I'm no, still alive. Yeah, I so, guess God protected me. Yeah, but um, so we we did that preserving food, canning food. Then we went and we did uh, meat birds, and we went in with some friends. And that first time we butchered, we did was it four or five families together? We yeah. did a couple hundred meat birds yes. one day. Um, and then we added pigs. Yeah, pigs were next. Pigs were next. So we just kind of like, so we- and we had a horse. Oh, well we had horses already. Two yeah. yeah, which were are living at my cousin's when we were in Florida. So two ponies really. So it's something I've had my whole life is horses. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we did have that. And then, which we don't eat them, obviously. No. <laughs> and uh, so priority wise was a garden and then starting to raise our own meat was a big deal to us. Something else that was a dream in the making and it took three years was a family milk cow. We wanted our own dairy mm -hmm. and we were able to get a milk cow, a Jersey. Um, it probably would not have become a reality in three years in at that point no. because financially it's a big investment. But our friend, um, Tanya, you know, Tanya, <clears throat> Tanya and David, she had several cows and um, she just, uh, had one that wasn't great for machine milking and was older and so we leased her I was like I'm, she was basically my cow until we moved you know right. um, for all intents and purposes so yes. we were able to get the dairy cow experience um, three years seemed like forever to me at that point I remember when I finally had the cow it was just like this has been forever you know right. and it really was only three years but it was awesome and we milked her um, for a while and then we, we moved back to florida uh, but we had raised pigs at that we had farm. raised pigs we, we also bought the tarantay's heifers we bought tarantay's heifers because we wanted to raise our own grass-fed beef and so we were going to do that um we, we, we sold those to move to florida because yeah, we, we couldn't take everything with us we had a steer at the time too as well 
um, a Jersey steer we had picked up to raise for beef. So we prioritized Abner. Abner. He was a sad <laughs> little thing. He was funny. He almost died when we ever got him. It was terrible. But yeah. we saved him and he was funny. But um, so we really, the priority I would say was the garden was number one because yes. it's something that we could get a lot out of for little investment. I mean, right monetarily a little investment is a lot of time and a lot of work but monetarily and we were able to preserve we we canned just out of a couple of rows of beans that year our first year we can 70 something quarts it's 72 of green, for 72 some reason it's stuck in my mind i think it was 72 yeah and i don't even remember how many pickles i made pickles like there was no yeah, that's right hey i can't yeah. believe you remember these numbers Sometimes I I remember. yeah i made pickles like there was you know some kind of yeah. pickle famine coming <laughs> and we ran out pretty quick well, we did we they did. were delicious they were everybody ate pickles like crazy so um and then of course part of the whole homesteading was cooking from scratch so that was a big deal was mm -hmm. learning for me i didn't you know really cook from scratch so i spent a lot of time and i was like shocked i was like i can cook yeah. i'm actually a good cook i mean not, not to pat myself on the back but i i yeah, you're a good I cook. I surprised myself. I'm like, did I really make this? Man, this is good. <laughs> I write recipes for my blog. I told Derek one day, I was like, sometimes it really blows my mind to sit here and think that I could barely cook before. I mean, I was like, unless, you know, it was something really simple, I could make mm -hmm. spaghetti and tacos, but anything like major, I was like, I couldn't do. And well, I just never tried. It wasn't right. that I couldn't. Just I just know. didn't you, try. You didn't know you could. I didn't know I could cook. And now I'm like, I write recipes. I make up my, the way I cook is I don't measure things. So then when I do go to write the recipe down, I have to like stop and actually think through. And it takes me about three times of making the dish to make it right with measurements. It's right. really funny. But, um, so cooking from scratch, I've made a little bit of cheese and things like that. Of course, making butter, all of those things were things, and skills. homemade ice cream. Yeah, and homemade ice cream, that's number one. All of those skills are things that were really important to us to learn. Um, and now, cooking from scratch is not a big deal, it's just what we do, that's how we eat. We eat real food, we make all of our, you know, we make our own food, we make, sometimes we make our own ingredients, it just depends yeah. on what we're doing, you know. Make our own taco mix and ranch dressing and Cajun seasoning, Cajun seasoning anything we need. Oh, that dog is going to bark. But uh, so we moved to Florida and we ended up getting goats, obviously, there. So we had goat experience. We uh, Goats were not our favorite. I, I, okay, I like goats. <laughs> I like goats as animals. They're hard to keep alive. And the milk itself, nobody in the family was a huge fan of goat milk. Sorry if you're a goat milk connoisseur out there. It's just for us, it was not our favorite yeah. thing. Goats so. are just not for us. But we like them. We like to play with other people's goats. They're cute. But anyway, so we did goats. We sold the goats, and then we ended up getting our other cow. So um, at this point, we've pretty much we've butchered all of our own um, meat. We've butchered turkeys and chickens and pigs and beef. Um, yep. We've... We've done our own dairy. That's what we're doing, which is a big deal for us. We're raising yep. our garden. And we're at the point where we're trying to raise most of our food. You know, we're trying, we're not raising quite enough meat to last. Um, we're having to buy a little bit, but right. we're raising most of it. So our goal, really this year, my goal is to put enough meat in the freezer that we do not have to buy meat at all. Right. We have enough to get through. We never have to buy meat. Well, I say never have to buy meat again, but that's obviously probably not a very realistic goal. But no. real for the most part that we have the meat that we need. And then also my goal is to can um, enough, you know, vegetables, and green beans and tomatoes and whatever um, to get through the whole winter and not right. have to, there will be things we have to buy because we aren't growing everything. But, you know, I really want to, um, you know, I, I, we want to try to have preserved and raise 75 percent of our food I'd say. yeah that would be and, then, and that's a, that's a completely attainable yeah goal. yeah absolutely i mm -hmm. mean obviously um sugar and flour and things like that we're not raising uh if we had bees we'd be doing our own honey which is yeah. something we have a little bit of experience with and we want to add back at some point as bees right um but the goal for us at this point we've started all this from scratch learned everything and now that we are you know seven to eight years into this we kind of have we're more in the tweaking and getting our systems down more because we have the experience yeah. and the knowledge of how to do the things it's just being efficient refining them refining being efficient and figuring out planning exactly like the quantity we need for our family and then we want to move into large Which keeps changing for some reason it's like we always need more and more it's like <laughs> Who the knows kids what? keep growing it's like we keep multiplying and then they keep growing and they yes. eat like 
you know, Jack we is like a teenage one, boy. One chicken to two chickens per meal, and now three chickens yeah, per meal. Yeah, we're at three chickens per meal. People are like, you're raising, you know, over 100 meat birds at a time. I'm like, dude, we eat three per meal. We eat three pounds of beef when we make spaghetti and or probably tacos. really need to up it to four on tacos and stuff now. It's crazy. So anyway. He thinks we do. Lots online. of food. Well, we really, really do. So we do. I mean. Jack's nodding. Yeah. Yes. Gertrude gives us a gallon. I miss a gallon and a half a day. A gallon and a quart. And that's once a day milking. That's once a day milking. And she is a half beef, half dairy. And she is not a high producing dairy breed. So um, we're, we're using that pretty much. I mean, sometimes yeah. there's a little bit left that we end up giving, going to the pigs. But I'm at the point I could probably start making a little bit of cheese or a ration the milk. But, um, you know, we want to, that's why we want to add a second milk cow. We're going, we want to be able to grow a grass fed beef herd and more pigs and our goal is to have our food but also market farm with yeah. pasture based non-gmo soy free meats that's you know so this starting from scratch homesteading started with this little dream of raising some of our own food mm -hmm. and you know with the lofty goal of like oh a dairy cow one day and you know maybe our own beef one day to now we have done all of that and have all of that going for us and we really want to be able to do that for other people, you know. Right. It's expensive um, to buy these products. That's why we raise our own because we can't afford to eat clean meat, yeah. you know. But our goal, we you know it costs money to raise animals, but our goal is to try to find that price point where we're still making a decent profit. We're not giving away our product, but where people who are in the same boat as us, where they can't afford to go out to the grocery store and pay $10 a pound for ground beef, for grass-fed beef. Yeah. Uh, people like that to be able to purchase from us and, to, and, afford, it. and afford it that's yeah. really my heart because i know what it's like to be the mom who desperately wants to feed her kids the healthiest food possible and just can't afford it yep. so we want to be able to that's kind of where we are at this point we're wanting to expand and um but we have the room here it's just getting getting uh it takes resources to get the perimeter fence built and uh, time. I have a plan yeah. I, I know what I've got to do is just getting the, the resources and the time which yeah. which is co hopefully coming soon yeah we'll see so but anyway so just an encouragement you know if you're starting from scratch you know it's really attainable just start start small do, do one thing at a time because if you try to do everything at one time you're gonna burn out you're gonna you know and expect to learn through failures yeah you know there's going to be good experiences we've had times where we've raised 100 meat birds and lost like virtually none and then we've had times where we tried to raise meat birds and everything died yeah. and we literally had barely any left at the end so exactly it's just um, the w the main thing and we drive this in the ground is do what you can where you are everything yeah. that you can do where you're at do you operate at full capacity like we've said we have never homesteaded on our own property um, we have been with my parents' property, or my parents' and my cousin's property. We have rented, and <coughs> we're renting now. I'm <coughs> fortunate enough to have 37 acres to rent. We want to buy, we're hoping we buy, that we can get a large piece of land so we can do the large scale. Mm -hmm. That's what we really want. But if we had waited until, until we had our own place, we would have done nothing. No. We wouldn't have the experience in life. Yeah. We've had a lot of um, experience at this point. So, uh-oh, hope he's mad about something. Yep. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, just if you're starting from scratch, do what you can. If you're, you know, if you're in an apartment, do some herbs on your counter, do on your balcony, do some tomatoes and peppers and buckets. You know, if you're in a neighborhood, you can do um, raised garden beds in your backyard. You can probably do some chickens. You may be able to do some meat rabbits. In some neighborhoods, you can even have goats. Right. So you may be able to get a Nigerian dwarf milk goat in your backyard. Yeah. Um, just utilize your space and gain the experience and of course knowledge is wonderful even if you can't get the experience experience is the best teacher but until you get the experience read like crazy watch YouTube like crazy and just learn everything you can about yes. homesteading um, but that is kind of our from scratch story the, in the, a nutshell yeah. the more you do the more passionate you're gonna become about it so just you can't tell I'm like woo, woo, woo. Yes. I'm that way too inside I'm just tired he's tired he has been a long out. day it's been a long week long, week, long <laughs> month so anyway um yeah that's our story and we encourage you to do what you can where you are and just learn everything you can absolutely that's what i'm thinking yeah so we did seems to be working out okay yep